I'm hooking us together. Hey there, I'll be your instructor for today, and I welcome you to another episode of Boss Builds, guides for fun and alternative playstyles. Today's build features a marriage of the shotgun and riot shield playstyles. By seamlessly switching between the two game plans, you can cover the weakness of each playstyle and adapt to most scenarios. This build is suited for those who wish to become a mobile fortress, who ramps up to being a near unbeatable raid boss at close quarters, though it will require competence at both playstyles as a prerequisite. Here's the weapon and skill loadout for this build. So how are these two playstyles complementing each other? Shotguns are great at defence and enjoy approaching foes, they can struggle out in the open and prefer to stay behind cover. By having a shield on hand, you are essentially taking cover wherever you go, allowing you to traverse the battlefield more easily. You also further enhance the shotgun's favourite pastime of corner camping. Players like to grenade check corners they suspect may hide a shotgun user. By using grenade denial, you can quietly trick them into thinking the coast is clear. On the other side of the coin, shields in close quarters is a deadly dance of box pops and back steps, as many players like to use CQC as a quick way to put the turtle on its back. All this fancy footwork is good against shields, but a terrible idea against a shotgun. Unsuspecting players will not be ready to get blown away during a dance-off. Even if they land a the throw, players without the blade skill are stopped in their tracks by a surprise shotgun during a knife fight. Seasoned players may have spotted we're actually using two main weapons for this build, so how is this accomplished? You begin by playing as a shield user. Your aim is to run the clock long enough for the spawn point to allow you to access Drebin shop. After 30 seconds, you can return to the spawn point. Holding R2 and pressing circle drops your selected weapon. Now purchase a shotgun, then pick up your dropped shield. Because Drebin likes to give away shields and grenades for free, you can run 6 grenades and 2 mains for a very reasonable price of 750 drebbing points, less than the price of an assault rifle. A thing to note is that grenades do not stack past 3, so be sure to throw them in the general direction of the enemy team before returning to base. Is the spawn point too far to reasonably run? No problem. By caching your shield in an unlikely corner of the map, you can store it for your next respawn. Now, all you have to do is reach that location using your second main weapon. Assuming no friend or foe collected the shield, you will be fully leveled up and on the front lines. Was your rampage ended by an explosive? Luckily, we have a technique known as shedding. Even whilst on no health, you can still drop your shield during the ragdoll animation, just before you die. Similar to caching, now it's just a case of returning to the previous location to quickly get yourself back to full power. Finally, if you're willing to sacrifice knockback power, auto-aim lends itself well to quick switching, as it displays your distance from foes. By releasing L1 between shots, you can run at near top speed to remain an evasive target during the time your shield is down. That's it for this episode of Boss Builds. Good luck out there. Until next time. I think it's about time to get out of here. <laughs>